Good morning. Let me give some time here for people to get going this morning and join us. You know, I've got my coffee. If you're here, do you have a cup of coffee? And where are you joining from this morning? Or maybe you're watching the replay later, which is great. I'm a replay girly myself. I have little kids and they're getting going in the morning. And so for me, I for sure need that replay. Yay, hi, good morning. Bonnie Lake, my in-laws used to live in Bonnie Lake. It's a beautiful place. Good morning from California. Hi, Laura. So glad that you're here. I'll introduce myself in a, in a minute here, but I'm in Minnesota right now, and it is a glorious early summer morning. Blue sky, not a cloud in it. Says it's going to rain later, but we'll see. You never really know. One thing about me is that I love the weather and I'm always going to ask you about it and I'm always going to mean it. What is the weather like where you are? <laughs> I love the weather and living here in Minnesota, we get plenty of it. So I see comments coming in. There's a little lag on my ending comments, so I'll say good morning as I see it, but I see the comments are coming. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining today in this study, day two of our study. We're going to be looking at the story on day six in the book, but it is just day two, Tuesday morning. <clears throat> in case you needed a reminder, <laughs> I did. I almost wrote Wednesday. That's the kind of morning it's been around here. We're going to talk all about it. <laughs> I think I might try to open another screen with your comments because it is lagging for me and I want to say hi. So let me see if I can just do this here while people are still coming in. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad if you're watching later that you're tuning in. Maybe you're ending your day with us. Some of us are just getting going. Some of us have been up for hours. And maybe you are closing your day. What a great way to close the day. Here we go. I'm going to get to these comments one way or another. <laughs> There's some coming in here. Dassel. Okay, here's a story. I have a story about Dassel. I'm Michelle from Dassel. I see South Dakota and Oregon and Wisconsin. Oh, you ladies from everywhere. But Dassel, I, my college roommate was from Dassel. And I, I had so much fun with her because she had been the um, royalty in Dassel Cocado, and I had been royalty from Northfield, Minnesota. So we had a strong bond right away. So I have warm fuzzies for <laughs> Dassel. Hello from Iowa. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad you're here starting your day with us. Or again, if you're watching the replay, whatever you are, maybe you're on your lunch break from work, taking a moment to breathe for yourself. Whenever this is for you, we're just so glad that you're joining us. I'm so glad to be here. Um, this is a great way to start the day. I've really been looking forward to this morning with you. My name is Anna Rendell, and I watched, I think it was Karen who presented yesterday. I watched her last night, um, and uh, she just did such a great, 
opening for us on day one. I am so excited to be here in this Mary and Martha group this morning and go through this beautiful book, 100 Days of Strength in Any Struggle. And I wanted to take a minute um, before we jump into the devotion, we're going to be looking at uh, day six of the devotion, of the devotional struggle in the ordinary. I'm going to close an app here. Facebook's telling me I might need to close an app, so I'm going to close out here. So I'm sorry if I miss your comments, um, but I want to make sure the video works well. Uh, Becky, I see you're here. Just text me if anything's going funky, okay? Because I closed the comments, so I'm sorry. I won't be able to see those, but I'm going to jump in with them afterwards. Um, they're just not coming in on my end. So I'm Anna Brandel. I uh, love Mary and Martha. I love the community you have built here in this group. I've been lucky enough, blessed enough to be a part of a fly on the wall with some of your studies that you've done over the years, but uh, because I work at Dayspring. So I work full time for Dayspring, um, you know, side by side with Mary and Martha. And uh, for the last uh, 12 years, I've worked with Dayspring's Encourage. And uh, the, so that's why this is so special to me that we are working through this fabulous book together in this particular space. It's really, really meaningful to me. I love Encourage. Um, I, I'm going to go a little backwards with my uh, path here from, from Dayspring, but I'm full time at Dayspring. I work in the marketing team, the digital marketing team. Um, so I'm working behind the scenes doing all kinds of things. Uh, for books, for product marketing, all kinds of things um, with that. And I'm watching Mary and Martha product and everything that you do. Uh, fun fact, I also helped maintain uh, the Mary and Martha blog for a couple of years. So I got to see a lot of words and products come in that way. And I just love uh, the goal, the the company, the ambassadors, your your everybody. I love Mary Martha. I love Dayspring. And I loved finding all of that via Encourage. So I heard a lot yesterday. Um, and I've over the years in your studies heard about this sisterhood that you have. And um, even this army of women and how you get together and you talk and you love each other. And that is also what Dayspring provides us at Encourage. So if you haven't heard about Encourage with this this book, Encourage.me is uh, we're a website. We have 25 writers, and every single day we publish something uplifting, encouraging content for you. We publish someone's devotion on encourage.me every day, and we also run it as a podcast episode. Um, that's actually one thing I get to do is voice the podcast. So if you ever listen to our podcast, that's me. Um, so we run that podcast during the weekday and we put up new posts from one of our writers every single day. We feature books as well. We talk through the magazine that comes out and we also feature recipes um, with Mary Martha products that Nancy writes for us. So we put those up once a month as well. So Encourage is this online community where people can find that sisterhood that you've all found in Mary and Martha. Um, we open that door for them. We have guest authors come through as well. And people connect in the comments. Our writers share about, well, here's our tagline. Every weekday, one of our writers shares what's going on in her everyday life and how God's right in the middle of it all. Truly, that's what we do. And that's what we've done in this book. And so I'm really excited to be able to be a part of this to go through this with all of you. And today we're going to look at this, um, at one of my pieces that I wrote. It's day six in the book. And uh, it's called Struggle in the Ordinary. Now part of my introduction should have been um, with my family. I work full time for Dayspring, but completely remote. I always have. I live in Minnesota, just south of the Twin Cities. So if you know the area, coming at you from Lakeville, Hello. Um, and I live here with my husband. We just had our 17th anniversary and we have four kids. They are 12, 10, 8, and 3. So there's a lot of life uh, happening in my house. And uh, lucky for me, they provide all kinds of fodder to write about. <laughs> um, and just this morning with this, this piece, I was thinking about, you know, real life examples and ways I could 
look at this through a fresh lens. And my kids were so uh, generous to provide me with some new stories from just this morning. <laughs> I got one kid out the door for school. It was his last day of school today. And another child had woken up really early and woken that child up. She said, I only poked him once. <laughs> and then as we were feeding the dog, um, the garage door was open and the dog went right out the door down the street to say good morning to another dog walking by. It was a whole tussle. It wasn't even eight o'clock. And I thought, Lord, are you, are you in this even? Oh my gosh. And that's the whole point, right? That's what we're going to talk about. So he is in this. Let's, um, let's open it in a, in a little word of prayer. If you join me from right where you are. God, thank you for this morning, for this evening, if we're tuning in, for the mid-work day, wherever we are, whenever we are, you are present. Thank you for being here. We are gathered, even online, and so we know your presence is with us. Thank you that we can come to you in the ordinary chaos of our days and in the extraordinary struggles that we all hold as well. Thank you for being that constant care and presence and strength. Bless our time together this morning and throughout these next weeks as we look at this book and as we take time to focus intentionally on who you are and the strength that you offer all of us access to all the time, even when the dog is on the loose and our life looks in shambles. You were there with your strong and constant presence. Thank you for this time to reflect on that and remember it and look for it in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, like I said, this is day six, Struggle in the Ordinary. And I actually <laughs> I love that this was the devotion we chose to look at today because I wrote it about sitting in this very spot, this chair, in this place. Uh, this is where I work full time. I sit at this desk for many hours a day. Uh, but this is also my room. This is our bedroom. I'm in the little corner of the room. That door right there, when that door opens, the, the life pours in. That door is the door to the hallway. And I wrote this devotion sitting right here. I open it by saying, I work my full-time job from a desk in the corner of my bedroom. And that's where we are. In this devotion, I go on to talk about how to my left are piles of laundry, some of it clean, some of it not, some of it mixed together. And even though I wrote this devotion two years ago, it's still true. If I turn this camera, which I'm not going to do, you would see all the laundry piles right over there. <laughs> Some things just uh, just don't change. And then I go on to say that to my right is my closet, and I have a mirror hanging there, and usually a kid who comes through that door. Now, they know I have work boundaries and different things, but they also know I'm here. And they come in. I talk in this in this devotion about how outside that door is where my kids bicker. They protest bedtime. My husband is chasing them and working on homework. Uh, and how everything points to uh, that I just have to turn around to see how far I'm falling behind. And I think that concept is is so. Um, accessible so universal it doesn't we don't have to have a million children we don't have to have a full-time job it doesn't matter what our life semantics are there's always a part of it in which we can feel behind do you have a garden that needs weeding you feel behind do you have a car that needs an oil change it's another thing on the to-do list do you have that phone call that you've been putting off or that appointment you've been waiting to make all of those things can just pile up. And for me, anyways, it feels sometimes um, super overwhelming. And I look down at that to-do list. It's, it's right here. It's on my desk. And it can be overwhelming because it never ends. I never get to the bottom of that to-do list. I'll check it off. I'll cross it out if it's done. And yet, 
those tasks just remain and pile up. And then all I have to do from this vantage point is look to my left or look to my right or wait for that door to open and all the reminders of the other ways that I'm falling behind come barreling through. It's a lot. And, and also, it's just so ordinary, isn't it? It's just the regular things. It's not the big things even that sometimes push me over the edge. I don't know about you, but it's not necessarily the major things. It's all the tiny little things that continue to pile up that can overwhelm me and help lead my struggling. But in the, those moments, um, and in this devotion, I say, amidst the to-dos that engulf me, there's a tiny negative piece when I remember the hands that are truly holding all the things together. And you know what? They're not mine. <laughs> They're not mine. If it were only my hands holding everything together, there are no words for the mess and the chaos that would ensue. And so even this morning when that darn dog <laughs> ran out the door, I knew it's not my hands. We're going to catch him and it's going to be fine. But the bigger story is, right, there is this pair of hands that is holding all of it together, that is offering that strength and presence, and that goes before and behind and hems us in. I mentioned in this devotion the a psalm, and I wanted to read it this morning um, because it's just so good. It's not long. It's Psalm 142. And in my Bible, it says, it labels it as a cry of distress, which I love. I love that we can come to the word of God and hear a cry of distress. Because like my laundry piles, some things just withstand that test of time, don't they? And so this, even though being written so long ago, I can relate to David, to his cry of distress. So this is Psalm 142. In the, in the book, I mentioned verse 3, but I'm going to read the whole thing right here because it's so good. And it takes us on this journey of where we feel and where we can see God. So it starts, Psalm 142, I cry aloud to the Lord. I plead aloud to the Lord for mercy. I pour out my complaint before him. I reveal my trouble to him. Although my spirit is weak within me, you know my way. Along this path I travel, they've hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. No one stands up for me. There's no refuge for me. No one cares about me. I cry to you, Lord. I say you are my shelter, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am very weak. Okay, pause. How many times have we said that? Listen to my cry, for I am very weak. That's it right there, isn't it? It goes on to say, rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Free me from prison so that I can praise your name. The righteous will gather around me because you deal generously with me. I love that. I love that honesty and the way that he pours out his struggle, his weakness. And we know, and he knew, that where our weakness shines, <laughs> is on display, God's strength can also be. And that's the whole point of this struggling in the ordinary. Um, at the very end of the devotion, I say on the overwhelming and ordinary days, he knows our steps and he walks them with us. So I'd love to hear this morning where you've seen that where you're finding God's strength or seeing his steps with you. Go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'm going to go through and, and answer all of you um, when I'm done being live here and I can see the comments again. But where are you seeing God's strength? Where are you seeing his footsteps walk alongside you? Continue uh, in this devotion by ending it with the tasks may pile up, but they'll never overtake the love peace and strength God has for us. 
And friends, that is so true. No matter what your struggle is this morning, today, every day. Oh gosh, that same dog is barking. This is this is a struggle point for me today. <laughs> But no matter where we find ourselves today, on this path, in this book, in this group, in our business, in our neighborhood, in our jobs, in our lives, wherever we find ourselves struggling, coming up short, being overwhelmed by the ordinary things of our days, we can still look for God's footsteps next to us. He is still there. He is still strong. He is still walking with us. And I'm so grateful to have this moment this morning to start our day on that note. That's going to carry me today. And I hope it carries you as well. Um, I hope that, w that we can continue to look together to each other and see how we're, how we're struggling and where we're seeing the Lord in it. That's the whole point of Encourage. And that's the whole point of Sisterhood. In Christ isn't it that we can continue in our real lives our very real messy lives and uh, point each other to the strength of the Lord who goes before behind and hems us in I'm gonna close this in prayer this morning um, let's pray God thank you for this time for just even a few minutes to spend in your word and with each other talking and sharing and reflecting. Thank you for a few moments of quiet and peace as we intentionally take that time to seek you and to ask you for your strength to carry us through. I pray for these women gathered here in this space and all the women in the sisterhood of Mary and Martha and encourage. And I pray that we would see your strength in your hand and your footsteps right beside us. That when we feel weak because of the laundry or the challenges or the extraordinary struggles or just the ordinary ones, that we would see your strength and that we could be a sister who reminds another one of that strength as well. When we see her struggling, we could point her to you. Thank you for being the God who sees us, the God who is strong for us in the daily, mundane, ordinary struggles. We love you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining me. I so appreciate it, and I appreciate the invitation to be here. You're going to hear from more encouraged writers throughout the next weeks and from your own Mary and Martha sisters um, and ambassadors. So thank you again for this time, and um, I'm going to go dive into the comments. Have a great day.